So today we are looking at optimization, which is a very popular um, topic in calculus. And we are going to title this lesson, not these, but this is your 3-4. Okay, so we've got um, five problems to look at. So the first couple are a little easier than the last, but if you get used to the process for optimization, it's not just about the answer, it's about your process. So it's, it's not enough to get the correct answer, you have to show the work justifying how you arrived at that answer as well. So definitely focus on the details. So starting off, um, so you can read this if you want to. Um, this can be a challenging lesson, so you might have to pause, review, re-listen, ask me questions, um, clarifying things, that type of stuff. So that's really important for you. Um, this part I would highlight, just be sure to read your problem carefully first so that you know what you're looking for. What are you trying to optimize? Then identify the quantity to be optimized and the constraint. There's always some sort of a constraint that restricts our answers. If a quantity is stated to be a fixed value, so like something is going to equal five, that will be your constraint, and we'll come across that um, as we do a couple of our problems. And that has to be true regardless of whatever solution you come up with. So for question number one, we are to find two positive numbers, so positive right there is a restriction, such that the sum of the first and twice the second is 64, and whose product is a maximum. So we are trying to maximize the product. So I'm gonna start off with part A. I'm gonna to try to write on this so that I don't hit my iPad. So pardon my horrible handwriting. So part A, we're gonna let um, x equal the first number. And then y will equal the second number. So you do have to define your variables. We need to know what you're letting equal what. And then part b, I'm going to change colors here, part b, let's write our equations to solve. So the equation that we want to maximize would be um, f of x is equal to well, I don't want to write it f of x. Da, 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 da. I'm just going to write maximize, and you'll see why in a minute. So maximize product. So that's going to be our x times our y. But the equation that they really gave us was find two positive numbers such that the sum of the first and twice the second is equal to 64. So the sum of the first plus twice the second is equal to 64. So this is called our secondary equation. This is going to become our primary equation because we're maximizing it. That's our optimization. And this is our secondary equation. Typically, we use the secondary equation. We'll solve that equation for y and plug the value into the primary equation so that the primary equation only has one variable because it's easier to find a derivative of one variable. And we'll talk about why we're doing a derivative as well in a minute. All right, so then part C is going to be to solve that secondary equation for y. So I've got 2y is equal to 64 minus x. And so divide everything by 2, I get 32 minus 1 half x. Or you can put 64 minus x over 2. They're both the same thing. So then I'm going to take this value here, and I'm going to substitute it in to that y value there. So part D, we get f of x, so now I'm going to use my f of x, is equal to x times, and then we're going to put in this 32 minus 
1 half x. All right, and so I want to find the derivative of that because if I want to find a max or a min, remember the first derivative test will help us determine if we have a relative max or a relative min. So that's why we're doing that. So f prime of x is equal to, oh, before I find that, hang on, I want to simplify, sorry, this is why you do your notes in pencil. All right, so f of x, I'm going to distribute the x all the way through, so I get 32x minus 1 half x squared. So then f prime of x is equal to 32 minus x. And how did I get that? 1 times 32 is 32. That becomes x to the 0. 2 times 1 half is minus 1. That becomes x to the first. So this is our derivative. So then the next step, remember our answers have to be positive. So that is a bit of a restriction. So then... Let's see if I can move this over. Yeah, good. So then part, what am I on? F, C, D, O, E. I know my alphabet. All right, so then part E, we're going to let F prime of X equal zero. And we're going to find our critical values. So X has to equal 32. So if X is 32, then go back to your original equation. Y has to equal, um, we're going to put 32 in, well, we can put it into the 32 minus 1 half X. So let's do that. 32 minus 1 half of 32. And this 32 is coming from there. Remember, we made Y equal 32 minus 1 half X. And so then we get y equaling 32 minus 16, which is 16. So therefore, therefore, the numbers are thirty-two and 16. So this is one of the easier problems. Okay, so then let's go to example two. I'm trying to make it a smidge bit bigger. Okay, so example two, you're probably gonna need a little bit more room for. We have optimization over a closed bounded interval, meaning if you read the problem, we have a rancher who plans to fence a rectangular pasture adjacent to a river. So this is what you need to draw a picture. It helps you see what's going on. So here's the river. He is going to make a rectangular fence right here for a pasture. And so this is where his pasture is going to be. He's right in here. So the pasture must contain 180,000 square meters. So that's a constraint, in order to provide enough grass for the herd. So if we have too little, we won't have enough grass for the herd. So we need to optimize what? So let's see what we're looking to optimize. What dimensions would require the least amount? So optimization can be a minimum or it can be a maximum. So we're looking for the least amount of fencing if no fencing is needed along the river. So this is going to be a natural boundary. So we only have fencing here, here, and here. So let's let, a picture is part of your let statement, so I'm gonna let x be the length, and then you'll have two y's for the width. So we are trying to minimize our fencing. So our <clears throat> primary equation is gonna be perimeter. So perimeter equals x plus two y. Add up all your sides, right? And then we have a constraint, our secondary equation, which is our area. So area is going to be length times width, which is x, y. So primary is what we're optimizing. In this case, minimizing perimeter. Area is our secondary equation. We're going to use that to get all of these variables to read x. 
So we need to solve this equation for y. But before we can solve this equation for y, we need to put in the area right here that we were given. Because remember, 180 square meters is our area. So we are going to replace area right here with 180,000 square centimeters equals xy. And if I solve that equation for y, I'm going to divide both sides by x. So I get y equals 180,000 divided by x. Then I can substitute that value here in for my y here. So that looks like P equals X plus 2 times 180,000 divided by X. And then I'm going to rewrite it so that I don't have any fractions. So I end up with P equals X plus this 2 is going to get multiplied to 180,000, so it becomes 360,000 over x. But I'm going to move the x up into the numerator as, and when I do that, the exponent becomes negative. So I'm going to end up with 360,000 x to the negative 1, because that will make it easier to find the derivative. All right, so here comes the derivative. So then... And let's go ahead and keep that as part A. So P prime, so the derivative um, of X is going to be 1. Then minus 360,000 times X to the negative 2. And you can leave your derivative that way or you can uh, rewrite this part right here is minus 360,000 over positive x squared. It doesn't matter really which one. And maybe that might be easier to solve because part B, we have to take our derivative. So part B and take our derivative and set it equal to zero and solve. So I've got equals one minus 360,000 over x squared. So I'm going to add the 360 over x squared to both, or to the other side, well, really to both sides. So it becomes this. And if I cross multiply and solve, I will have x squared is equal to 360. If I take the square root of both sides, I really should take plus or minus the square root of both sides, but because x represents a distance, x must be positive. So I know that my domain, x has to be greater than zero, or my domain has to be zero to infinity. So it can't equal zero because then we're not going to have any kind of length there. So my resulting x is going to be, oh, exactly, not even remotely, but exactly equal to 600 and because it was meters squared, it's going to be meters. If I substitute the 600 um, into this equation right here, so I've got 180,000 equals 600y. To solve for y, I would divide 180 by 600, and you get 300. So y is equal to 300 meters. Now, we want to check and make sure that we have actually minimized. This is the part that's important, and this is the part you're going to try to skip, and you're going to lose points for skipping this section. So don't skip this section. So what you're going to do is you're going to take your derivative right here, and I would take this form of the derivative and put it into the y equals of your calculator so that we can use the table feature to plug in values for x because x are critical value, so you might want to highlight that. This is our critical value that we're gonna test, use that first derivative test for, to look for increasing and decreasing. So part C is going to be, whoops, let me get my correct color. So part C, I'm going to 
look at our critical value of 600, and I'm going to choose a value to the left of 600 and a value to the right of 600. And I'm gonna plug that in on my table feature of my calculator. So here I go, I'm gonna go into my calculator and clear out anything that's in there, putting in one minus 360,000 X to the negative two. Okay. Then I'm gonna hit second, waiting for my calculator to stop thinking, second graph, and then I'm gonna put in a value, I don't know, I'm gonna put in 550, because that's to the left of 600. If I put in the value 550, I got a negative value. So anything to the left here is gonna be negative values. I just put a bunch of negatives. If I put in 600 exactly, I get the value of zero, which is correct because that's a critical value. And then I'm gonna choose 650 because that's a number to the right and I got a positive value. So any value that you choose to the right is gonna be positive. So the point of that is you're looking here, that means we're decreasing on the left. So the left means we're going down. And on the right here, a positive means we're increasing. So we're going up here. What that does is it creates a minimum. We're going down and then up. So right here at 600, is a minimum. So I want you to put that there, a minimum, which means we just found the minimum values that will create the least amount of perimeter for that area of 180,000. So therefore, maybe I'll use green. Therefore, the pasture measures Three hundred meters by oops, sorry, six hundred meters. Okay. All right. Let's look at the next one. Example three is a little bit more lengthy, um, and there's a little bit of some think outside the box, if you will. So for this particular one, you have a picture of the box we're trying to create. It says an open box is being constructed from a piece of sheet metal 18 inches by 30 inches by cutting out squares of equal side from the corners. So this whole outside before we cut the squares is 30 inches and this is 18 inches across here. And then we cut out squares here of X and X, X by X. We don't know what the size of the square is. So if you think about it, the side, the measurement of this side, if we're going to let all of this be 18, would be 18 minus the X minus an X. So it's 18 minus two X's. And then your length down here on the side is going to be 30 minus an X and minus an X. So it is 30, let's see if I can turn this sideways, 30 minus 2x's. Now, the domain um, has to be, so our smallest side measure, and this is where you have to think outside the box, our smallest side measure is here at 18. So if you were to set this equal to zero, because we wanna make sure that this value here is greater than zero, because if this value is greater than zero, then this value is going to be positive as well. We can't have any negative dimensions. So if I set this equal to zero and solve, I'm gonna end up with x equaling nine. So think about this, if x were nine, I'd have 18 minus 18, which is zero. If x were eight, I'd have 18 minus 16, which is two, so that's okay. Um, but if x were 10, I'd have 18 minus 20, which is a negative value. So my point is that our domain for x has to be from zero to nine. So you might wanna look at it as an inequality. x has to be less than nine, but greater than zero. So our answer for x must become, be somewhere between zero and nine and not including those, okay? So there's a constraint. 
So then, let's look at our equation. So, we didn't finish reading the problem. Um, doo -doo -doo -doo. And bending up the sides. So these sides are going to be bent up, so that means that the height of the box is going to be this measurement here, which is x. So what size squares should be cut to make, so we're trying to find x, to make a box of maximum volume. So we want to maximize our volume. So that is our primary equation. So part A, volume of anything is area of the base times the height. Well, our base here is length times width and then times our height. So we don't know what volume is, but in our case here, we're going to just call it V of X. We'll make it into a function. And we have a height that's X, right? And then we have this side length of 30 minus 2X and this side length of 18 minus 2X. So I like to put mine in. I don't like to put my X at the end. So I'm going to put the X here and then 18 minus 2X and then 30 minus 2x. So that gives us our height, our width, and our length. Okay, if you go and multiply all these together, so you should multiply these together first, and then distribute the x, and I'm saving room on here um, because I don't have a lot of room. So, whoops. So if you were to multiply those out correctly, you would get the following, 4x cubed, for volume minus 96 x squared plus 540 x whoops okay now we don't have a secondary equation here because um, we don't need one. Number one, everything here is in terms of one variable. And number two, this is our constraint. We're just gonna make sure that our answer stays within zero to nine. So this is one where we don't have a secondary function. All right, so what do we do next? Next, we're going to find the derivative. So part B, we're gonna find V prime of X. And so this one should be fairly simple. We get 12 x squared minus 96 times 2 is 192 x plus 540. All right, so at this point, we want to set our derivative equal to 0 and solve. So I am going to factor out a 12. So if we were to divide both sides by 12, then all we would have left is this. And so then the question you need to ask yourself, are there factors of 45 that add to give us 16? And the answer to that is no. So this is not a factorable quadratic. So you could either complete the square or you could use the quadratic formula. I prefer the quadratic formula. So for my purposes here, my a is going to be 1, my b is going to be negative 16, and my c is going to be 45. So using the quadratic formula, x is equal to the opposite of b, plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. So let's plug in our values. So negative 16, negative 16, 1, and 45, and then 1. So we end up with x equaling, if you go and simplify everything, you're going to end up with x equaling positive or negative square root of 19. Well, because our domain here has to be from 0 to 9, if you do x um, plus the square root of 19, you're going to end up with 
or eight plus, sorry, eight plus the square root of 19 is equal to 12.35. And that's outside of this domain. If I put in x minus the square root of 19, I get about 3.641. So we're only going to use, whoops, we're only going to use the x minus square root of 19. So we are going to cancel out. In fact, you might want to put an x through that one. And so we're going to use 3.641. And that's in inches. All right, so then now we have to test that x value to see does it indeed um, minimize a volume. So our um, critical value is the 3.641. And if I do substitute that into our volume formula, so part C, V of, and I'm going to use, I'm going to sub the whole exact value in, 8 minus the square root of 19. If I substitute that in, I get approximately, and I'm subbing it into this formula up here, right here. Okay? So I get approximately 886.6. Inches cubed. Okay, so I have to justify. So then part D, we are going to justify. So we only have one critical value, 3.641. All right, so I'm going to choose some values to the left and values to the right. So if I put this into the y equals of my calculator and I go to the table, so second table, and I'm going to plug in some value to the left of 3.641. So I'm going to choose 3. When I plug 3 in, I get positive, a positive number. So that means everything to the left is going to be positive. And so then I chose to plug 4 in, so I'd be to the right of 3.6, and I got a negative value. So that means all values to the right are negative. So what that first derivative test is telling us is that if we have a positive to the left, that means we're increasing. A negative on the right, that means we're decreasing. So if we're increasing and then decreasing, we must have a max right here at 3.641. So therefore, therefore, the volume would be maximized at 886.552 cubic inches if the squares cut from the corners are 3.6441 inches by 3.641 inches, okay? All right, so then let's look at our strategies here. And so hopefully by now you've kind of gotten the gist of the strategy. So we read the problem, underline or highlight any key information, draw a picture if you can, and then label any constraints and variables for the unknown. So we've been doing that. You wanna write a primary equation, and that's the equation that we're trying to op optimize. So whatever quantity we're trying to optimize, that's your primary equation. Then oftentimes, you're going to have a secondary equation, which is another limiting factor. And we're gonna take that equation and solve it for y, and so that we can substitute that into the primary equation in order to get one variable in that primary equation. And so that's what this is here. And then you're gonna simplify that primary equation, 
And then through that simplifying, you uh, should be determining a feasible region for your domain here or somewhere up here, it might come to play. Then you're gonna differentiate that primary equation and find your critical values. You have to determine your absolute relative max or min based upon that first derivative test. So I have to see that work that you saw up here that has to be part of the support for your answer that you have here. And then answer the question in a complete sentence with appropriate units. So here we go. We have two more problems to do and then we're done. So in these types of examples, we're going to look at a domain that's not closed on both sides or bounded on both sides. It's open, wide open either all the way or on one side. So example four says, what are the dimensions of an aluminum can that can hold 40 cubic inches, so that's volume, of soda, and that uses the least amount of aluminum? So using the least amount of aluminum is surface area. So if you don't know your surface area and volume formulas for a cylinder, you'll need to look those up. Fortunately for you, I'll give them to you here. Assume the can is cylindrical and capped on both ends. So you have a top and a bottom, it's not open. So we are um, minimizing the amount of aluminum, which is surface area. So our first or our primary equation is gonna be surface area. So surface area of a cylinder, that's SA surface area, is two pi r squared, and that is the area of the two circles, the top and the bottom, plus the area of the part right here that goes around. So you might look at that as a label on a can good, that kind of thing. So that is actually um, a rectangle. It is the length times the width of the rectangle, because if you open this up, think about opening up the label on a can, it looks like a rectangle. Well, the length of that label is actually the circumference of the can times the height. So that's how we get that part. So we get two pi r, that's the circumference, times the height, and that gives us the surface area of the label on that can, if you will. All right, so then the volume they told us was 40 inches cubed, right? And volume is always area of the base, so pi r squared times the height, so pi r squared h. So we need to solve, um, it's probably easiest in this particular case if we solve for h because, and the reason why I say that is there's only one h in this equation here. Notice we don't have x's and y's this time. And so it'd be so much easier if we just substituted them once. So I'm gonna take this equation, our secondary equation, and solve that for h. And so h is equal to, I'm gonna divide, or, um, divide both sides by pi r squared. So you get 40, I'm gonna leave off the inches cubed, divided by pi r squared. All right, so then we're gonna take that value here and substitute it in to that H there. So part B, I'm going to find, we're call, I'm gonna call surface area and we're gonna be solving for R. So I'll call it S of R is equal to two pi R squared plus two pi times 40 over pi r squared, that's a terrible looking r. There we go. And then that's our h. So now I can simplify, the pi's are gonna cancel, and we'll end up with, and one of the r's, oh, I must have left off the r here, sorry. So there's a pi r right there. So this r here cancels with one downstairs. So our simplified, primary equation is s of r is equal to 2 pi r squared plus, uh, let's see, 2 times 40 is 80 over r, but I'm going to write it as r to the negative 1 so we can take the derivative, okay? So the derivative, part c, so s prime of r, is equal to 
Now on this one, your two and your pi, remember, are constant. So we're going to take the two and multiply it to two pi. So we get four pi. R will now be to the first. And then 80 times negative one is minus 80. And then R is going to be to the negative two. So you could rewrite that as negative 80 over R squared. Your choice. So part four. Let's go ahead and set, or part four, part D. Let's go ahead and set, I'm gonna leave that as the same part. I'm not gonna make another part. So I'm gonna set the derivative equal to zero. And I think I will go ahead and write this as minus 80 over R squared. And I'm gonna add the 80 over R squared to both sides. And then I'm gonna cross multiply to solve. So my work is now gonna come up to here. And so I get, um, let's do four pi r cubed. Is equal to 80. Divide both sides by four pi. So I get r cubed is equal to 20 over pi. And then I'm going to take the cube root of both sides. Let's do that in green. And this is cube root, cube root. And so I get r is equal to the cube root. Well, the actual exact answer is cube root of 20 over pi, which is approximately equal to uh, 1.853. So that becomes our critical value. Okay. Critical value. Let's figure out, um, let's justify whether we have, so I'm going to call this part D now. So now we're going to justify. We're going to put 1.853 on the number line, and we're going to put into our calculator um, this form of the derivative, and we're gonna plug in a value into our table that is less than 1.8. So I'm going to choose one, and then I'll choose two for to the right. So when I substitute in one, I get a negative value, so this whole left side is negative, and when I plugged in two, I got a positive value, so this whole right side is positive. So what that means is I'm decreasing to the left of 1.85 and increasing to the right of 1.85, which means I'm going down and up, which creates a minimum. You wanna write that minimum or at maximum there. All right, so I need to now find, they wanna know what are the dimensions of the aluminum can that can hold 40 cubic inches? Okay, so we have to find, we found our R, right? So now we have to find our height. So for part F, I'm going to find, maybe I'll do it over here, part F, I am going to substitute into our H formula that we found in part A. So H is equal to 40 over pi times. And I'm going to use the exact value underneath here because that's going to give you the best answer possible. So cube root of 20, that's a 20 over pi. Okay. So if you uh, plug that into your calculator correctly, you should get approximately H is approximately equal to 3.707, and that's in inches. So therefore, um, the can um, will have the least amount
of aluminum. If at least my aluminum and a volume of 40 cubic inches, if the radius is um, 1.853. Inches and the height is uh, 3.707 inches. Okay, our last problem is determining um, which points on a graph are closest to another point. So here we have the graph of y equals 4 minus x squared, which is a parabola that opens down. And we want to know which points on this graph right here are closest to this point, 0, 2. So I would always um, graph the equations that they give you and draw the point. Now, if you recall from geometry, the shortest distance, because we want to minimize the distance. They're not even telling you that you're minimizing the distance. But... Closest means that I am minimizing the distance um, is always a perpendicular value or a perpendicular line. And so it would look like, oops, that wasn't very good. So it would look like this right here. So both of these lines are going to be perpendicular to the point they're meeting. And we don't know this point is x, y. And then this is another point over here, which is its... Um, Symmetrical point. I don't know why I couldn't think of that. All right, so distance, and, and so this one's a little bit harder because it's like, well, what formula am I using? I'm not, I, I'm kind of using this one, but I'm not. Since we are minimizing distance from this point to that graph, our primary um, equation is the distance formula. So we're going to start by using the distance formula. So part A. The distance formula, if you will recall, you might want to put up here that you're using the distance formula. So all the way from algebra one, we're going to call this D of X. So distance in relation to X is equal to the square root of, and your, you find the difference between your X's and the difference between your Y's. So, um, So I only have one ordered pair that I know of for sure. And then the other ordered pair I don't know. So I know that this one here is 0, 2. But this one here, right here, I don't know that ordered pair. This ordered pair is going to give us the same thing or the same distance. So I'm just going to work with one of the ordered pairs. All right. So the distance is the difference between the x's. So I've got x minus 0, and then you square it, plus the difference between the y's, and I have y minus 2, and I'm going to square that. So if I multiply out y minus 2 squared, um, oh, actually, if I use this, so this is going to be my secondary equation. So let's highlight that one. This is my secondary equation. If I solve that one, which it solved for y, couldn't I just place this value right here in for y right there. So I would end up having d of x is equal to the square root of x minus 0 squared is just x squared. Then plus, I would have, instead of y, I'm going to put in 4 minus x squared minus 2 squared. And then if I multiply this out, so this is going to actually give me 4 minus 2 is 2. So if I took 2 minus x squared and multiplied it to 2 minus x squared and then added my x squared to that, so you can do that off to the side. I just don't want to use a lot of space here on the video. You would end up getting the square root of x to the fourth 
minus 3x squared. If you don't, you really need to stop the video and do this on your own so you can double check, make sure you know how to do your math. Now, here's where a little bit thinking outside the box comes from. In order to minimize this distance, if you think about it, the smaller the value is underneath the radical, the smaller my distance is going to be. I know that this value cannot be negative because distance is not negative. So that's number one. I know that my distance has come out to be positive. So what you want to do is only minimize, we don't even need the radical. We, all we have to do is just take the x to the fourth minus 3x squared plus 4, and we're going to find the derivative of that because that's the only part that we really need to minimize. So part b, I'm going to take out of that primary function, I'm going to call it, let's just call it g of x, is equal to x to the fourth minus 3x squared plus 4. That's all we need to minimize. The smaller that number is, the smaller our distance. So that makes life so much easier. So the derivative of this function is simply 4x cubed minus 6x. And then we want to set that equal to 0 and solve. So I'm going to factor out a 2x and I'm left with 2x squared minus 3. And if I set each of these equal to 0, I get x is equal to 0 here. So here's one of my critical values. And then I'm going to add 3, divide by 2, and take the square root of both sides. When I take the square root of both sides, I have to have a plus or a minus. So x is going to equal positive or negative square root of 3 halves. Now you're probably going to want to think that you have to take out the negative, but remember x is an ordered pair. And this particular equation, this quadratic, x can be any value we want it to be, positive, negative, zero, whatever. It's the entire real number system. So we actually have three critical values for once instead of just one. So when we go and justify, so part C, let's do our justification. So I'm going to have three values. I'm going to have negative square root of 3 halves. I'm going to have 0, and I'm going to have positive square root of 3 halves on this number line. All right? But I'm going to put into my calculator this, or I'm sorry, this right here into my y equals, and that's what I'm going to use to determine my negatives and positives. So I put this into my y equals, I went to my table feature, and I substituted in a value that was less than the square root of 3 halves, negative square root of 3 halves. So if you take the square root of 3 divided by 2, whoops, see if I can put the right number in there, 3 divided by 2, uh, you get 1.22. So let's write that in here somewhere. Square root of 3 halves is approximately equal to 1.22. Okay, so I'm going to choose negative 2 because that's less than negative square root of 3 over 2. So when I put that in there, I got a negative value. Then I wanted to choose a number in between negative 1.22 and, and 0. So I chose negative 1. So I plugged in negative 1 and I got a positive value, which means we are decreasing here, increasing here. So at the negative square root of 3 halves, we have a minimum. Right? Minimum. Then... Um, uh, to the right of 0, I plugged in 1, and I got a negative. So that means I'm decreasing. So that means if I'm going up and then down at 0, there must be a maximum. And then I put in a value to the right of positive square root of 3 halves, which was 2. And I got a positive. So that means that I'm increasing. And so I'm going down and then up. So that is a minimum at the square root of 3 halves. 
So then you need to decide which of these critical values you're going to substitute into here because we want to minimize our distance. This one would maximize it. So we don't want to choose that one. So in case, in this case, we're going to use negative three halves and positive three halves, and we're gonna substitute them back into our equation here. So when I do that, I get the following ordered pairs, and so therefore, um, the closest points, move my stuff around, so the closest points to zero, two would be negative square root of three halves, comma, and when you substitute that in, you get positive five halves and square root, positive square root of three halves, comma, five halves. Remember, they are symmetrical points. And so this is our final answer. You should have questions for me. Uh, this homework is not going to be easy, so please, 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 I beg of you, ask me questions.